So uh, another um, really useful way to uh, quantify uh, rates, how fast or slow chemical reactions are, are is, uh, something called the half-life. Right. So the half-life. Okay, often abbreviated T sub 1 half. All right, and what the half-life is, it is the amount of time it takes for half of the reactants to react, to be consumed. <coughs> and the really nice thing, well, just, you know, just to try and put a bow on it, so half-life is the time for half of the reactants to react. Okay, so it's where we get half-life. All right, so the half-life, <coughs> um, the good thing about the half-life is, unlike the rate, the rate is going to change constantly during a reaction because the concentration of the reactants are constantly changing. They're going down. So the rate's going down. So the rate's changing the whole time, all right? The half-life is always constant. And so you can look at a half-life, and that's the half-life for that reaction all the time, given the same same temperature. I guess that's the only real thing that can really uh, change the half-life. At constant temperature, half-life is going to be the same. Okay? And so the half-life is really easy in terms of math, too. Okay? So let's look at this plot from your book. Okay? You've got uh, a reaction involving blue spheres. Okay? And the uh, half-life of these uh, blue molecules are 100 seconds. So every 100 seconds, half of the reactants are going to be gone. They're going to react and go away. They're going to make some problems. Okay? So if you start out with 24 blue molecules, okay? after 100 seconds, you have 12. Okay? After 100 seconds more, half-life is still the same, so now you go from 12 to 6, 6 to 3, and so on and so on. Every 100 seconds, half of your reactants are going away. Right? And so that's constant. The half-life is uh, always the same, the amount of time it takes for half the reactants to go away. Okay? Obviously, the more reactants or the concentrations can be different, but um, at any uh, stage of the game, but that's really nice. Okay? And so you can compare and contrast reactions uh, and say how fast or slow they are based on their half-life. Okay? So what do you think the relationship is? Okay, if you're looking at, I don't know, let's just make up an example. Okay, so we got reaction A. All right. Reaction A with a half-life of, I don't know, 300 milliseconds. Or reaction B. With a half-life of two hours. You could ask questions like this. Um, which reaction is faster? So what do you think? Reaction A or reaction B? A. A? A. A. Yeah, A. So with the shorter half-life, those A molecules are going away a lot faster. Every 300 milliseconds, you're losing half of the A molecules. Whereas B, they're staying around for two hours, and then you lose half of them. So yes, reaction A is faster. <coughs> and then you can even, uh, you know, compare, trying to compare apples to apples, 
You can even start comparing uh, stability if you really wanted to, okay? So if this is just say, let's say this is a decomposition reaction for both. Which molecule is more stable, A or B? Which one is more stable? B. B. B? B? Yeah, B's would be more stable. It's staying around for a lot longer. A's going away, so it's probably really unstable, reacting very quickly. Reaction B, whatever B is, would be more stable. So the slower, the faster the half-life, the shorter the half-life, I should say, the more reactive it is, the less stable it is. Mm -hmm. And definitely not, uh, the faster the half-life, the shorter the half-life, The faster the reaction, and reading into a little bit more, and the less stable the molecule. The reactants, I'll say. Uh, we use half-life uh, when we talk about uh, nuclear chemistry. We talk about radioactive isotopes. Half-life of a radioactive isotope is really a good measure of how stable it is. Okay, There's radioactive isotopes with really long half-lives, millions of years, billions of years, and they're pretty stable. There's radioactive isotopes with millisecond half-lives. Of course, they're not as stable. All right, so we'll use that, uh, you know, you can use that in kinetics, uh, certainly for any reactions. Um, like uh, half-lives are very useful in, uh, you know, pharmacology or pharmaceutical uh, sciences. Talk about how long a drug stays in your system. We'll talk about the half-life of a drug, how long it stays in your system before your uh, body metabolizes, metabolizes it and distributes it and excretes it eventually. All right, so 